Hello, everyone, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for all the interesting discussion so far. Uh, and uh, today I'll be talking about our work on um, self uh, on how to self adapt uh, machine learning components in uh, machine learning based systems. Um, and well, uh, okay, sorry. Um, as you all know, machine learning is uh, everywhere nowadays, from self-driving cars, fraud detection and medical diagnosis systems, robots, uh, weather forecast. Um, I mean, we, we spent the day talking about that more or less. So, um, And in this specific uh, work, we uh, define machine learning based systems as systems that are composed of both um, machine learning components uh, for instance, supervised or unsupervised, semi-supervised, uh, although we focus specifically on supervised um, machine learning components and also non-machine learning components. And then all of these components can interact between uh, one another. Um, additionally, uh, these types of systems like self-driving cars typically operate in non-static environments um, and uh, and um, are prone to unpredictable changes. Um, these changes, okay. these changes uh, can lead to the machine learning model to mispredict um, some uh, inputs, and this in turn uh, will affect the machine learning model's performance. Um, because the system depends on the machine learning, then the overall performance and reliability of the system is also affected. As such, we have that machine learning mispredictions have an impact on overall system utility. And based on this, uh, we uh, came up with the vision for uh, self-adaptation to um, adapt machine learning models in systems um, that depend on these models. And obviously, whenever these models um, are misbehaving. Uh, however, well, Obviously, there are a lot of challenges, but uh, in particular, we um, we deal with one in this work, which is uh, what can we actually do to improve the machine learning model in runtime? So what adaptation tactics do we have available? Um, and in order to uh, yeah, uh, talk about our vision, I'm going to uh, use a running example from the fraud detection system domain. So. Um, in the, in the fraud detection system domain, we have clients that uh, perform transactions, and then the uh, client's bank receives these transactions, and the, the banks have to either accept or decline the transactions. Um, and in order to do so, uh, in order to uh, distinguish uh, legitimate transactions from fraudulent transactions, the bank relies on a fraud detection system, um, whose job it is to verify the transaction. Um, and in, in this example, the fraud detection system is our machine learning based system. Since, since, oh, oh, sorry. since it relies on a machine learning model, um, which outputs a score, and this score um, represents the likelihood of the transaction being um, either fraudulent or legitimate. And this model score is then used by the rule based model by a rule-based model, which is a non-machine learning component to um, actually decide uh, based on this model score, whether the uh, transaction was uh, legitimate or fraudulent. And then the rule-based model sends this uh, decision back to the bank. And in this context, there are uh, different types of system utility that uh, we can think of. Um, and we give uh, different examples in our paper. Uh, and one of these examples is, for instance, the cost of losing clients uh, due to incorrectly declined transactions. Uh, one additional uh, challenge in this domain is that the impact of uh, machine learning mispredictions is not constant. And what I mean by this is that the impact depends on the clients because different clients uh, have different service level agreements established with the fraud detection company. And also because um, depending on the time period, um, the impact of mispredictions is also different. For instance, if you think of a uh, period such as Black Friday, um, during which uh, there are a lot more transactions, 
um, at least, yeah, there are a lot more transactions, then um, the cost of incorrectly declined transactions is much higher. Um, and what exactly can actually cause these systems to misbehave? So uh, we uh, think about different kinds of um, uh, causes of misprediction, and one of them is data set shift. Um, and data set shift is basically a change in the distribution of the input samples. Uh, so the samples that uh, arrive to the machine learning model um, are substantially different from the samples in which the machine learning model was trained. And because of this, the machine learning model doesn't really know how to um, uh, predict them. And, and this can happen in the fraud domain, for example, when new fraud patterns emerge. Um, and in this uh, example, what happens is that the uh, fraudulent transactions now have uh, features that the model cannot distinguish from the features of legitimate transactions. Uh, one other cause of uh, machine learning misprediction is the presence of incorrect labels in the model's knowledge base. Um, this can happen because, for instance, a fraud analyst um, incorrectly labeled uh, one transaction, or just or because an adversary has polluted the um, model's knowledge base, the model's knowledge base with um, incorrect uh, predictions. Uh, thus leading the model to mispredict for uh, specific inputs. Um, and in order to be able to deal with these mispredictions, uh, what we envision is that uh, the system can uh, react, well, can detect that the system, um, can detect that the machine learning model is misbehaving and has um, adaptation tactics available to execute and correct um, the model. And so some of the um, adaptation tactics that we describe um, are, are these in particular. I, I will highlight here the retrain tactic, which is, um, I guess, the most intuitive one, um, and which basically, which basically um, corresponds to retraining the machine learning model with a new data that um, represents the new task that we want to learn. For example, in the example of the new fraud pattern, we uh, envision retraining the model with transactions that um, correspond to the new fraud pattern so that those features uh, are now taken into account by the machine learning model. Um, however, this is, well, knowing what are the actions that we uh, can perform in runtime is not the only challenge. Um, the MAP K loop, which is a popular uh, framework for, uh, or which is a popular control loop for, for self adaptive systems, um, also needs to um, deal with some additional challenges because we are dealing specifically with uh, machine learning components. So uh, the MAP K loop is composed of uh, uh, four different stages, the monitor, uh, analyze, plan, and execute stages. Uh, and then it has a knowledge base that uh, stores uh, the knowledge about the environment and about the system. And for instance, in the monitor um, stage, uh, the, the key task is to um, measure machine learning performance and uh, decide, um, yeah, monitor machine learning performance. And differently from, uh, well, I guess uh, typical systems, it's also important to monitor the inputs of the machine learning model because, um, for instance, a data set shift may be more easily recognized in the inputs um, or at least maybe recognized faster. Um, additionally, it's very challenging to um, monitor the performance of these types of systems in runtime. Um, for example, and taking it back to the fraud detection domain, um, the feedback uh, for the transactions takes quite a long time to become available. And as such, um, being able to estimate the performance and the accuracy of the fraud detection system in real time is very challenging because we, we have no ground truth against which to compare the predictions of the machine learning model. 
um, yeah, so, so this is a challenge in, in this stage. Um, then in terms of the analyze stage, um, we need to understand uh, whether and how the machine learning component is actually affecting uh, the other components uh, in the system or, or the overall system utility. Um, however, um, how does uncertainty actually propagate um, again uh, across the components in the system and specifically um, across the machine learning models? Um, yeah, this, this is also a challenge. Um, then moving on to plan. Uh, the plan component is responsible for uh, determining which action the system should uh, perform <clears throat> to self-adapt the, the system. Um, however, in this particular case of machine learning components, um, we need to reason about the costs and the benefits of the machine learning adaptation tactics. Um, and this is challenging because it's the, the benefits of, um, for instance, the retrain tactic are not um, that predictable. Uh, for, for example, if you think about retraining a machine learning model for 10 minutes versus retraining the same model for one hour, you are likely to get different results. Or for instance, if you retrain the model, um, even if for the same amount of time, but with different uh, sets of data, it's also likely that you will end up with um, different accuracies. Um, and then um, finally, in terms of the execute stage, uh, how can we efficiently deploy the tactic that uh, was selected by plan? Um, and so uh, the challenge here is how to ensure uh, tactic predictability. So as I said, um, it's, it's not easy to predict the benefits of a tactic. So um, it's also not easy to uh, ensure that whenever we execute a tactic, it will have the benefits that plan um, uh, predicted it to have. Um, and uh, we envision that the knowledge um, stage can help with this problem in the sense that it will uh, keep track of the outcomes of past adaptations. And uh, this knowledge could guide the uh, self-adaptation loop and help plan reason about the costs and benefits of uh, the tactics. Um, now, just to kind of um, compare or uh, situate our work with other work that has been done on um, machine learning for self-adaptive systems, uh, what we have seen a lot so, so far is um, how these self-adaptive systems have uh, used uh, and leveraged machine learning inside the actual self-adaptation loop uh, to improve the overall self-adaptation process, for instance, reducing adaptation spaces. Um, however, uh, and differently with our work, uh, we would like to leverage self-adaptive systems to improve the machine learning in uh, systems. Um, and in order to do this, uh, we also um, think the work on continual and lifelong learning to be relevant in the sense that it deals with uh, problems that are somewhat similar to the ones that uh, self-adaptive systems also deal with. And so the techniques developed here can uh, be leveraged by self-adaptive systems to um, contribute or improve the adaptation of machine learning systems. And similarly, uh, the literature on machine learning, um, which has proposed uh, what we here uh, gathered uh, and considered to be tactics, such as transfer learning and learning and uh, retraining models and hyperparameter optimization, which are also techniques that uh, can be leveraged to improve uh, machine learning. Uh, finally, um, I just want to briefly go over some open challenges that we have identified. Um, it's not an exhaustive list, but it's uh, yeah, how, how to actually detect that uh, the machine learning models are performing poorly. Um, this is especially difficult as I said, for instance, when labels take uh, quite some time to arrive, and so having um, real-time uh, performance um, metrics is is uh, or performance 
real-time measures of uh, model accuracy is, is not uh, trivial. Um, additionally, how can we quantify the impact of these mispredictions on overall system utility? And um, how can we reason about the costs and benefits of each tactic to decide uh, which tactic to execute? Um, and just uh, concluding some concluding remarks, uh, what we have seen was that uh, machine learning mispredictions affect system utility, uh, for instance, due to uh, data set shift or incorrect labels. Um, and as such, um, the machine learning model could be improved in runtime uh, via adaptation tactics, such as uh, component replacement or retraining. Um, however, um, the um, adaptation process might not always be worth it because of the costs and benefits of the uh, tactics. And as such, it's very important to, to reason about this trade-off. And uh, that's what we are focusing on uh, right now for future work. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Okay, thank you, Maria. Uh, great talk and a uh, uh, lot of uh, challenges you, you have uh, uh, <laughs> mentioned. So, so uh, it's really interesting to, to reason about that. And uh, so, so let us say we have a, a little time for uh, one or two questions. So if someone have a question, can uh, directly ask uh, Elias, I see, uh, raising ha his hand. Yes. So please. Uh, thanks, Evita. I, I was first uh, ah, before Thomas. Yeah. Uh, great uh, presentation indeed, yes. I enjoyed it. Um, so uh, I was, you know, I was wondering about this uh, issue of um, uh, when to trigger uh, the analysis phase that you showed and when to trigger, uh, for example, a, a retraining. Because I can see two triggers: um, the, uh, the trigger when the, for example, accuracy or or your favorite metric, uh, uh, machine learning classification, for example, metric uh, is lower than a threshold, or when the utility of your system is uh, damaged. And yeah. how do you go about reconciling these two? Because do you first look at the utility of the system and then try to see, okay, is it is this drop because of the machine learning component? Okay, let's try to retrain. Or do you go the other way, uh, looking at the um, machine learning component and, and the metrics. Have you have any thoughts on this? Uh, yes. Uh, so actually, um, well, what I'm working on right now, I think has some connections uh, with that. And okay. um, so we are explicitly working on uh, reasoning about the costs and benefits trade-off that I described. Right. And in that sense, we, we are, um, we are uh, comparing two scenarios, uh, one in which um, machine learning uh, directly affects, um, so, sorry, machine learning accuracy directly affects system utility. And then another scenario in which machine learning does not affect uh, system utility. And um, our overall goal is to ensure that system utility is above a given threshold because what we, uh, what we what we think or what we envision is that even if the machine learning model of your system is uh, performing above uh, below um, a given desired threshold, if the impact of its uh, predictions do not really impact other components in the system or uh, the actual system utility, then um, why should you spend uh, resources? Uh, improving that component that's not having an impact on, mm -hmm. on your well, system. I get it, I, and I agree. I, I want to even remark, if, if I may, that there might be weird cases where lower accuracy, I believe, um, can uh, even improve the, the utility of the system. That's because uh, some because the, the lower accuracy, I mean, the result has to go through your, as you saw, through some rules, right? And if these rules are too restrictive, for instance, I think you can even think of cases where lowering the accuracy might help, might be more permissive model. So basically then it might even in increase the, the utility, but okay, we can, uh, that, that, that needs more discussion, of course, but uh, thanks. Mm. Thank you. Uh, uh, okay, and we have uh, uh, for one, just one short question and short answer. So Tomas. 
hi, hey, hey. Very nice talk indeed. Uh, I was uh, wondering, you, you mentioned that uh, in the monitoring phase, you have to detect uh, that the distribution has shifted or that the data are not exactly the same. Uh, in the paper, you uh, mentioned, I mean, something about the distributions. Uh, any particular ideas how one could uh, do such detection? Because by their nature, the neural networks always give you an answer. They, they don't really, uh, uh, I mean, tell you that they don't know. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, there are different uh, techniques for detecting data set shift. And um, I, I don't remember right now the name, but there are even some like, I think Python libraries that already implement some methods that uh, can actually uh, detect that shift. Um, but the overall idea is that you you have to assume something always. For instance, you either have to assume that uh, what changes is the input features, but the labels remain the same. And as such, uh, the distribution of the features uh, given the labels, I think that that's it. Uh, remains constant and so based on that you can um you can detect uh the shift um or you can assume the other way around that the um labels change but the features remain the same and so it's based on on analyzing the the yeah i guess i'm going to call it differences but i don't think that's the correct term um in those distributions that that you detect the shifts um I, I can try to find some some papers about specific techniques for that and uh, send them to you. Okay, thank you very much, Maria. And, thank you, uh, thank you. That would be lovely. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the talk and for for the discussion. So one uh, digital upload.